Good morning, students. In earlier classes, we have discussed about Laplace transform. We have defined earlier various types of transformations. A particular transformation known as the Laplace transform. Various properties of Laplace transformations and we have calculated the Laplace transform of some functions. In this series, now we are discussing about the Laplace transform of some more functions. First, we see that the Laplace transform of a function e raised to ax with respect to the parameter. <coughs> By definition, the Laplace transform of e raised to ax with respect to parameter h, parameter p is integral 0 to infinite e raised to minus px into e raised to ax dx. This can be solved as integral 0 to infinite e raised to minus p minus a into x dx. Now, if we integrate this one, we get this is as e raised to minus p minus a into x upon minus of p minus a and the limit of integration are from 0 to infinite. If you put the limits of x, then we get this is equals to 1 upon p minus a. So, here we get the Laplace transform of e raised to ax with respect to parameter p. This is equals to 1 upon p minus a. The condition is here. p should be greater than a. So, this is the Laplace transformation of e raised to ax. Now, we find the Laplace transform of e raised to iota ax with respect to parameter Proceeding in the same way and using this result, we get this is equals to 1 upon p minus a. Here a is iota a. So p minus iota a. We can write this one as 1 upon p minus a, p minus iota a multiplying by p plus iota a upon p plus iota a we get this one as p plus iota a upon p square plus a square. So, we get the Laplace transformation of e raised to iota ax is equals to p plus iota a upon p square plus a square. If we write this one as Laplace transform of cos ax plus iota sin ax as we know e raised to iota ax is equals to cos ax plus iota sin ax with respect to parameter p then this is equals to p plus iota a upon p square plus a square. So, resolving this or separating this in real and imaginary parts we get Laplace transformation of cos ax with respect to parameter p is the real part this is equals to p upon p square plus a square and Laplace transformation of sin ax with respect to parameter p this is equals to the imaginary part this is equals to a upon p square plus a square. So the Laplace transformation of cos ax this is equals to p upon p square plus a square and the Laplace transformation of sin ax this is equals to a upon p square plus a square p square plus a square now we get another Laplace transformation
the laplace transformation of another function which is hyperbolic sin ax the laplace transformation of the function hyperbolic sin with respect to parameter if you write hyperbolic sin ax h laplace transformation of e raised to <coughs> ax minus e raised to minus ax upon 2 with respect to parameter so this comes to be equals to laplace transfer 1 by 2 laplace transformation of e raised to ax with respect to parameter t minus 1 by 2 Laplace transform of e raised to minus ax with respect to parameter t. If here we use the previous result, the Laplace transformation of e raised to ax, then we get this is equals to 1 by 2. Laplace transformation of e raised to ax with respect to parameter p, this is equals to 1 upon p minus a minus 1 by 2. Laplace transformation of e raised to minus ax, this is also equals to 1 upon p plus a rather. Solving this, we get 1 by 2 p square minus a square p plus a minus p plus a. So this is equals to a upon p square minus a square. So the Laplace transformation of hyperbolic sin ax is equals to a upon p square minus a square. The condition is for here that p is greater than mod of a. If you find the Laplace transformation of hyperbolic cos ax with respect to parameter p, we can write it as the Laplace transformation of e raised to ax plus e raised to minus ax upon 2 with respect to parameter p then we can write it as the 1 by 2 Laplace transformation of e raised to ax with respect to parameter p plus 1 by 2 Laplace transformation of e raised to minus ax with respect to parameter p. If we use the formula, the Laplace transformation for the exponential function, we get it as 1 by 2, 1 upon p minus a plus 1 by 2, 1 upon p plus Solving this, we get 1 by 2 p square minus a square p plus a plus p minus a. This comes to be equals to p upon p square minus a square. So, the Laplace transformation of hyperbolic sin ax is equals to a upon p square minus a square, and the Laplace transformation of hyperbolic cos ax is equals to p upon p square minus a square where p should be greater than mod of a. So these are the Laplace transformation of the hyperbolic functions hyperbolic cos ax into hyperbolic sin ax. We find some more Laplace transformations of some more fun functions. We find the result, the Laplace transformation of e raised to ax, the Laplace transformation of e raised to bx sin x, e raised to bx sin ax with respect to parameter t. <coughs> the Laplace transformation of this function, by definition, this is equals to integral 0 to infinite e raised to minus ex, e raised to bx, sin ax with the into bx. If we solve this, we get integral 0 to infinite, e raised to minus p minus b into x, sin ax dx. By the definition of Laplace transformation, we see that this is equals to 
the Laplace transformation of sin ax with respect to the parameter here p minus this is the Laplace transformation of the function sin ax with respect to parameter p minus b. If we solve this we know that the Laplace transformation of sin ax is equals to a upon sin a upon a square plus p square. So this is equals to a upon a square plus p square p is here p minus p whole square and we solve this one as a upon a square plus b square minus 2 pb plus p square which is the uh, Laplace transformation of e raised to bx sin ax. Similarly we find the Laplace transformation of e raised to bx cos ax with respect to p. We use, if we use the definition of the Laplace transformation, this is equal to integral 0 to infinite e raised to minus px into e raised to bx cos ax with respect to p. We solve this, this is equal to integral 0 to infinite e raised to minus p minus b into x cos ax dx. If we see, the, we compare the this integral by the Laplace transformation or the integral of the Laplace transformation, we see that this is the Laplace transformation of a function cos ax with respect to parameter p minus p. And we see that the Laplace transformation of a function cos ax is equals to p upon p square plus a square. So this is equals to p, here p is p minus b. So p minus b upon p square, p square plus a square or a square plus p square. So this is a square plus p minus b whole square. So this is the Laplace transformation of e raised to bx sin ax and this is the Laplace transformation of e raised to bx cos ax. So we study the, sum, the Laplace transformation of some function. In next class, we will also see the Laplace transformation of various functions. Thank you. Thank you very much.